welcome back to your paint box in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, my pretty little studio here. We're getting ready to start a pretty easy little Valentine themed four by four project, uh, the little candy hearts. So uh, it should just be a few easy steps and uh, we should have fun. So let's get started. Okay, is everybody ready for step one? We are going to get a little, get our brush a little bit wet and with your water and come over here to this yellow ochre. And that's a good paint to kind of thin down with a little water so that we can do our drawing. You wanna thin the paint down just a little bit for your drawing. Oil paints are kind of thick and heavy and they take a long time to dry. So you can see me marking the halfway points. That's just a little guide to help us with our drawing. Um, so what I'm gonna see here, the first thing I see is that the um, little pink heart, the Be Mine heart, the corner, top corner of it starts almost right there at that halfway point. So that's what I mean about having a little guide. Now, hopefully we can all draw hearts pretty easily. I don't wanna make it too small. And we're looking at these from an angle, so we're seeing the side of them. And they're kind of fat, those chunky little candies. In fact, in the next scene, I'll put some of these little candies right here on the table in front of us. Okay, that's pretty good for the first heart. Now for the second one, it's right over here. And I might have these a little closer on this page, on this canvas than I did in my practice one. And we're gonna draw the sides of them, kind of chunky. So this, the bottom side, the bottom line here, will just mirror the top line. They'll be kind of just going in the same directions like these two. And then the third heart, the love heart, is going to mm, let's see. Down there at the bottom. Okay, I think that's it for the drawing. Just want to get your three hearts in there and then um, come back and meet me at step two, which is going to be the background. All right, we are ready to mix the background color, this pretty light yellow green. So what we're going to start with is we're going to make a green using blue and yellow make green. So I am going to use maybe one part blue to three parts yellow. So there's very little blue in this formula. And it looks like I need even more yellow. Keep it nice yellowy green. I'm gonna add a little white to that to see what happens when we lighten that up. Oh, I think I added too much white. I made a little practice pile during the break and that's what you see there. I couldn't quite remember how I'd made it before, so I thought I'd better do a little practice before telling you all. So I put too much white. It happens, even if you've been painting a long, long time. Is that about the right color? I think it is. All right. So when you have the color the way you like it, you can pause and mix paint and join me back again once you have a color you like. In the meantime, I will go ahead and take my brush. I hold it pretty far back on the handle um, so we can hold it very loosely. In oil painting, you wanna learn how to handle the brush very lightly and, and hold it. Uh, you don't wanna put a lot of pressure. See how I'm just gonna sweep that paint. It's truly like spreading soft room temperature butter 
And I think I have a little dog hair in there. Yep. And I usually put a finger right here on the corner of my canvas to kind of hold it down. And you see how I do these kind of crisscross strokes, sliding and gliding that paint so it covers the canvas. And I like a little variety and a little variation in, in a background color. So it's maybe not all 100% the same color. I might even take a little white and kind of just kind of spread it through there. And I think what I'm going to do also is put some more yellow out. And some of these brush strokes, I might just drag a little more yellow. So you can mix the paint with your knife on the palette paper, or you can pick it up and mix it a little bit with your brush right here. So see, I've got a little variety. Some strokes are a little more white and some are a little more yellow. I'm going to go right up to those lines of the yellow ochre drawing. That when that paint's thinned with, uh, oops, I picked up the wrong color. When that paint is thinned with water, it, it will help it dry a little faster. Otherwise, oils actually cure. They don't dry. They cure and harden from within uh, structurally, so they take a long time to dry. I'm just throwing some yellow in, some white. Spreading that smooth paint. And you see how I, this brush has a nice corner and I can just kind of slide right into the middle of that little space at the top of the heart, the corner of that brush. So if you, if you hold your brush very lightly and learn to use it as a tool, unlike a pencil or a marker, it's, it's, it's used differently. You want to slide those smooth brush strokes on. And I like to put it on kind of thick. That's what we like about oils. They, they're the nice, juicy, thick medium where you see, can see a lot of texture. You can get texture with acrylics, but not so much with watercolor. And that's just one of the things we like about oils. And the fact that they're so, they're so slippery and luscious, they call it the luscious medium. And I think I'm pretty happy. Now I need to put the shadows in next to the candy hearts. And I think I'm gonna do that by just taking a little of the first blue, your lighter blue, that would be called either phthalo blue or cerulean blue. And uh, let's see, let's see what that looks like. I kind of went a little crazy there. I like it. Let's see how it looks over here. I think I may need to put some ultramarine blue in there with it. Um, let me cut that in half. I'm gonna take half of that away because I think it's just too bright. And I'm going to put some ultramarine blue in there and see if that doesn't give me a shadow color I'm happier with. Put a little of my green back in there. I think that works. Just kind of a pretty darker shade of green. I just didn't want it to be too bright because it's a shadow color. Okay. And like I said, uh, we are working on a new microphone if you're having trouble hearing me and I know everybody's computer is different. And there's a little background noise tonight because the bridal salon, the biggest bridal salon in Louisville is right next door to me. And in the uh, atrium that we share, they have big bridal parties with champagne and <laughs> uh, little celebrations. and. I think they're having one tonight. So I'm just gonna, you see how I'm just taking the brush and just softening that shadow line. Kind of just blending, but it's ever so lightly. I, I'm barely touching, barely, barely, barely. I go, like one of my teachers said, just like it's a feather. Just like you're trying to brush with a feather. Those are the shadows. And I think that's gonna be it for the background. And hopefully when we come back for the next step, there'll be a little less noise out in the hallway and we will make the colors for the candy hearts.
We'll see you in a few minutes. All right, if you're happy with your background and your shadows, um, I'm going to start with the candy hearts. Um, the pink one, I'm, I'm right-handed, so I tend to work in this direction so that the wet paint is always above my hand instead of underneath my hand. So I'm going to start with the pink and I'm going to take a little white and I'm going to add a little bit of this crimson, the dark red. It's called alizarin crimson. Some kits might call it purple red. And actually it's a very purpley red. I may need to add a little bit of this bright red, which is uh, labeled either bright or vermilion or cadmium red. And that might make it a prettier pink, a little less purple. And that's for the light side, for the top of the candy heart. And then let's make a little shadow color. Um, shadows tend to be cooler, so I made it kind of a, I kind of made the pink color of the candy a little more purple on the side. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that pink color that I have and put a little more of the cool ultramarine blue and that makes a kind of a pinky purple to be the shadow side of that candy heart. So let's go ahead and paint that one in and then we'll make the next color. I'm going to pick up very gently and very lightly that pink on the end of my brush. Now sometimes I see people getting paint all the way up in here and you can't use it. It's not no longer on your brush when it's up here. Even when it's up here, it's a little too far to use unless you're painting a different method of painting. But in this method, we want to keep it usable and kind of organized and keep it down here in the top third of your brush. And we're just going to slide it around in there. And you see how I'm not touching the green? I'm leaving a gap. That way I won't make a big mess. I won't have pink and green mixing and these two colors, this, this shade of pink and that shade of green are what we call opposites on the color wheel. And if they were to, if I was to get them to touch there and blend, they would make a very muddy color. So, oops, see, I picked up a little green. And you start seeing a little bit of muddy color. Uh, so I just have to be careful when I'm, you set, that's another reason why I like this brush so much. It gives you good control. I can get that paint right there on the end of that brush and I'm just gonna very carefully try not to get into the green paint. We're gonna save dealing with that. What I call the little gap. We're gonna save that for later, um, dealing with that little gap in there. And right now I'm gonna put the purpley shadow color. Ooh, I like that. The purpley shadow color, same thing. I'm gonna try not to drag any green through it. And there's a little bit of that shadow shown there. Try not to get into the green, just keeping that paint. When I'm in a real tight spot, I'm gonna keep the paint right on the very tip of that brush and just see if you can't just drag the tip of that brush through there. All right. Um, you know, as you follow these lessons along, you'll see that I, I like to get my shapes and colors, everything about 90% where, where I'm happy with them. Um, and then I'll come back at the end and make any changes. But if we worked for perfection at all times, we would never really get anywhere. So um, it, it's never gonna be perfect. And we need to just kind of get used to the fact that it's, uh, I'm in, I'm, you can see I'm making a little bit of a lighter pink with just that pretty bright cadmium red. I wanna just get a little bit of lighter color in there. Um, and then we come back at the end and we fix and change a couple things. And, and then sometimes when we get to the end, we think, well, I didn't really need to worry about those shapes being perfect. And there, I like that little bit of a lighter color. So I'm gonna have to rinse my brush off. And let's make that pretty peachy orange color. So uh, I said the word orange, so that means I'm probably going to mix a red and yellow red and yellow make orange. Hey, Tucker. I've got my little dog here today. 
You all have heard me talk about him quite a bit, and he had surgery this morning on his mouth, and he's he's a little out of it. <laughs> so I'm watching him walk around the room, kind of bumping into things and hoping he'll go to sleep. He's always looking for me. So that orange was a little more orange than peach. I think I'm just going to add a little more red into it. Right there. That's better. It's a little peachier. That's a soft, pretty peach. Maybe a little more red. Uh, and maybe I'll go back and throw some of this orange back in there. It's looking a little too pastel, too chalky. And maybe a little more. See, it's about the third time today where I've added too much white. You have to add a little at a time, really. You know, my students always say, why do you make such little piles? I said, well, I, I want to figure out the formula first. How much red and how much white and how much yellow makes the right color, and then I can go back and make it again. All you have to do is remember your little formula that you did five minutes ago. All right, we'll use that as the top color. And then I think that we're getting a little reflection of the green into that orange on the side. So I'm going to uh, maybe just take a little of our peach top color and put a little green in there and see what happens. I think that's nice. It's kind of a grayish, a grayish color. And there's some color theory as to why those two colors mix well together to make a pretty gray. They're technically opposites on the color wheel. Uh, so let's go ahead and put the peach candy heart in. And as you can see on the break, I went and got the actual candy hearts that I painted. And we're going to start. I might have to put my finger here. Start sweeping that paint. It looks like we have one giant candy heart and two mini ones on this painting. But that's okay. If I hadn't pointed that out, maybe no one would have noticed. And it's not about being perfect. It's about having fun and learning. Painting takes a lot of practice. Well, you know what I did? I think I made a mistake and I painted the shadow color where I should have painted this gray color. So I'm gonna go back and fix that if I can. Just maybe put this gray color on top here. The nice thing about oils, I was talking about this um, in a lesson, a, a YouTube lesson last night. The nice thing about oils, and my students who are here agree 100% that you can fix anything. I've never in, I hate to say, 40 plus years of painting, ever not been able to fix something. So I don't know how they do it in watercolors and <laughs> pen and ink when something happens and you can't fix it. So, um, there we go. Now I need to go back and add that shadow in below. I didn't notice that I had made a mistake there. And now I'm going to add that shadow in below the candy heart. It's a good thing I had some of that shadow color still here. Okay. Now we're ready to go to the purple heart. Um, so red and blue make purple. You've got to use the cool blue, which is this dark ultramarine, and this cool red. If you use the warm red, you're going to find something very muddy. So stay here with the crimson, purple, red. Let's throw a little white in there so we can see what we're making. And it's got to go quite a bit lighter, so let's throw a whole bunch more white. Oh, I don't want to do too much. That's my mistake all day today. Well, that's an awful lot of purple. Maybe I'll take some purple out, make that pile a little smaller to deal with, and let's add the white in now. See, I need more white. If a color's pretty far wrong, I don't keep working with the whole pile. I cut it in half. <laughs> it will just keep growing bigger and bigger as you try to correct it. And then you'll have enough to paint 10 purple candy hearts. 
I might, you know, compared to the real candy heart, it's a little more blue lavender. Maybe I'll put a little red in there just to get it closer. Okay, and then the darker color, I'm gonna take a little aside here, just a little cut that off, and we're gonna put some, the deep ultramarine blue in there, and that will be the shadow side of that candy heart. All right. Picking up very gently, the light purple. Sweeping it, sweeping it, not picking up the green. Being careful to push that paint really close to the green. You can just kind of almost draw at the end of that brush right there. And like I said, we'll deal with that gap later. I'm gonna throw in just a little white to lighten that purple up again. Yeah, that's pretty. And then the shadow goes in. So we're gonna pick up the darker color. We are dragging that shadow in just with the end of that brush, so kind of a little chisel end. basically the hearts established here. So now I'm going to show you how we're going to do that lettering. And then in the final stage, we'll uh, well actually let's stop here and take a break and let you guys catch up on the colors of the three hearts. And um, we'll meet you back here for the final step. We are ready to finish up. So we're going to tackle this lettering and I know you're going to think it's kind of hard. So I'm going to try to make it easy for you. This brush that I've given you, the one that comes in your first box, the number four is what I use to paint all the projects. Um, if you are in month two, three, four, five, six, you might have a smaller brush, go ahead and use that if you would like. But the four brush is kind of perfect because if I just get that just to the right shape, Kind of nice and smooth. The end of that line is what I'm going to use to make the end. The end of that brush is what I'm going to use to make the um, where you can all can see that the lettering. I'm going to dip right in here and I'm just going to tap my brush down into that alizarin crimson red, and I'm going to use the corners to tap the letters. There's, it's not like there's ink coming out of here, so people want to draw like it's a pen, but you basically you're going to have to tap. So. What I can do is I can tap the side of that B, and then I'm gonna to have to tap the curved little letters. I might use a little bit of that other red too. It's a little dark. Mix those two reds together and get a kind of a nice medium. And it's right on that chisel end. It's just, a, and I make, whoop, make it a little more paint. Gotta get enough on there. And just tap the side of that E, and then I'm gonna tap Three more little letters, there we go. My B is looking pretty good. And picking up both those reds and just getting it barely on the end and I'm gonna do a vertical line through one side of the M and a vertical line for the other side of the M. And I'm just gonna tap the little middle part in more paint and a vertical for the I, another little vertical for the N, and another one. Pick up some more paint, get the little diagonal in there, and um, a vertical like the E that we did above. And Tap, tap, tap a little bit of an E, uh, three little parallel lines for the mind. No one expects it to be perfect. It's a painting and everybody's gonna think it's fun. Now the XOXO should be a little easy on the X's. The O's might be a little harder. So I've mixed up a nice color, mixing the two reds together. And I'm going to just do a little diagonal and another little diagonal. 
another one, and another one. And then I'm going to take the two colors and just tap, tap, tap. See how I'm kind of just dotting a little circle just at that tiny little corner of that brush. I love this brush because it does have that tiny, tiny corner where you can make little tiny brush strokes. I always show you over here on the palette paper, this little dots that you can make. See, I'm, and you just connect all those little dots and you make an O. And now we have the last word. So that should be kind of easy there with the L. Um, one little vertical little chisel mark. Pick up some more paint, a little horizontal mark. Make the O the same way you did above. I'm gonna take the corner and just tap them on the circle. Got to make sure you have enough paint on there that it shows up. So this is where we are drawing a little more than we're painting. But we're just going to draw those little letters in and connect the dots. And then the V should be pretty easy because it is a little straight. Whoops, didn't get enough paint. It's hard when I'm trying to get just the tiniest little bit of paint on the end of my brush. I'm going to do the two little straight lines for the V. Ooh, look a little fat, but that's okay. I'm not gonna worry about it. And then the E. Just tapping with the corner. And then um, go back and touch up. And I'm just, oh, I just made a big mess. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that corner of that brush with the pink, where the pink was, and I'm going to fix that E with a little bit of pink that came back in there. And a little bit of pink going back in there. There, I kind of fixed that. So at the end, if you've been with me on other projects, you know that I like to go back in and fill in those little gap areas very carefully. Uh, I think this one right here, I'm getting just a little bit of green on the top of my brush. I'm going to just barely brush some green paint into those little gap areas. Get a little of that shadow color just barely get filling in that gap. Now I'm going very slowly now at the end here. I go fast through most everything. Then at the end, I go a little bit slower to fill in those spaces. And I'm going to take, let's see, I'm kind of running out of that pink. So let me get red and white to make a little more pink here. And I thought I lost the shape of that heart up there, so I'm going to just make a little more pink. Let's see if I can get the shape the way I like it. And you can see I got some purple in there, and I'm kind of making a mess. It happens to everybody. Just learning how to go back and correct it is the easy and fun part. Well, maybe not fun, but it is the easy part of the world. I'm having a hard time getting that shape around. There we go. And I feel like this shadow got kind of messed up here. You have to rinse that brush off a lot in between colors. And I'm going to take that peachy color here and here. And then I'm going to do the same with the purple, and we're almost done. Let's see, this this purple here. I'm going to fill in those little gap areas where my yellow ochre drawing is still showing through. Just real careful. Just real careful there. And a little bit of that shadow color touched up there. And you can always turn your painting if you need to get a better angle on something. 
be a little easier for me to push that green up into that gap area. And it looks like that shadow got kind of out of control. Well, I think I'm pretty happy. I might smudge the end of that one just a little bit, make it look kind of soft. And then I see one other thing I want to do on the pink heart. I want to add a little more of that shadow color. It looks like I lost it up there at some point, which happens a lot in oil painting. So we'll slip that back in, making these final little touch-ups. And we end up with a very cute little painting of Katie Hearts for February, for Valentine's Day. And um, I hope you guys enjoy that project. And practice, practice, practice. If you have a hobby store, craft store nearby, you can pick up some other panels and um, use your paints to do some similar projects or do this project again. Because practice is the only way you're gonna get better. And it takes years of practice. Um, one or two people out there might have a lot of natural talent and not need to practice as much as the rest of us, but really the only way we're going to get better is to keep on practicing. So I have some great projects lined up for March and we will see you then. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hello, and I told you that would be a fun project. So uh, I know it's intimidating to think about painting letters with a paintbrush, but um, easily it can be done. And and we'll look forward to next month's project and we'll see you back here in March.